So, good afternoon to all of you. Thanks to Dr. Nita and Dr. Sanjay for inviting me to be here. So, I'll be speaking about statins, particularly the outcomes with uh, the various statins in people with diabetes. And uh, we all know that cardiovascular disease is the major problem in pe people with diabetes. And, and uh, Jocelyn, almost a century back, said this, that with excess of lipids, diabetes starts, and with that, itself patients develop various complications and die because of atherosclerosis. So it is quite evident that we need to look at this uh, aspect and uh, try to understand the, the, the various risk factors which are contributing to atherosclerosis and contributing to the vascular disease. As you can see in this, uh, in this uh, cartoon, you can see the progression from the risk factors to the, uh, to the development of uh, atherosclerotic plaque then leading to a I mean, vascular event. So if you look at uh, the prevalence of dyslipidemia, I mean, we, we look at uh, the major causes of death in people with diabetes, we see that ischemic heart disease remains as the most important cause, contributing to almost more than, I mean, uh, different studies have shown varying from 50 to 75 percent. And uh, as you can see here, that remains the major cause for, for morbidity and mortality in patients with diabetes. And if you look at the prevalence of dyslipidemia, we see that uh, the prevalence is uh, to the tune of, this is not diabetics alone, this is in the general population. If you see the prevalence of dyslipidemia, it is probably 40% in, in overall, but uh, males tend to have a higher prevalence as compared to females. But if you look at diabetics, you see that diabetics tend to have a much higher prevalence of, uh, of uh, dyslipidemia. And if you look at the LDL cutoff of 100, you find that there is a significant uh, number of people with uh, dyslipidemia amongst the diabetics. And we have very good data from the ICMR INDAP study, which has also shown that almost 85% of individuals have either one form of dyslipidemia, that is either a elevated LDL cholesterol or is it the, or the tri elevation of triglycerides or low HDL cholesterol. The low HDL being the, probably the commonest abnormality that is identified. So statins have been the buzzword in, in the sense, uh, in the management of dyslipidemia for several years now, uh, maybe about three decades, more than three decades now that statins have been, been used. And uh, if you look at the mechanism of action of various lipid lowering medications we see that statins act at the hmg coa reductase uh, 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 where they inhibit the hmg coa reductase we have newer molecules like bempidoic acid which is acting which is uh, inhibiting more proximal atp citrate lyase and then we have the pcsk9 inhibitors and we have we have all these other agents that are that are being developed so over the years if you look at the outcomes data of uh, data with uh, the use of statins, as you can see, whether it is primary prevention or secondary prevention, you can see clearly see that primary prevention, you had studies like the Voskov study, we have uh, uh, AFCAP study, the, uh, the statin used also is mentioned in this, uh, in this uh, figure, and uh, the ASCOT, uh, RA tri uh, ASCOT trial, all these trials have clearly shown that even in primary prevention, they work uh, well in terms of uh, reducing the cardiovascular outcomes. And if you look at the secondary prevention, the impact is even greater because we know that uh, people with cardiovascular disease have a much higher risk of recurrence, recurrent events amongst the patients with diabetes. So if you look back at what the NCP goals were about in almost 20 years back, this is 2004, there they had suggested that uh, less than 100 should be the goal for high risk individuals. And there itself, they had suggested the optimal goal of 70. And a moderately high risk uh, is uh, patients with, with diabetes with one more risk factor. They considered 130 as the cutoff uh, or targeting the LDL to less than 130. And those with lower risk, that is non-diabetics or with one cardiovascular risk factor, they suggested 160 as a, as a cutoff. But over the years, if you see, the, there has been a change in the understanding about the goals of uh, statin therapy. As you can see, this is uh, from the 2018 uh, AHA ACC uh, algorithm where they have uh, suggested that for primary prevention, you need to look at a LDL target of, uh, I mean, LDL level of more than 190 to start statin in all classes of, a class two indication 
uh, class one indication to start starting in all in all those with a uh, LDL of more than 190. Um, those with diabetes, they have suggested a, uh, those with diabetes more than 40 years, all of them should be on statin. Uh, although the, the uh, and then for diabetics between the age of 40 to 75, uh, the risk assessment uh, should be done to consider those with higher, uh, I mean those who need a higher intensity statin, that is those who have got a previous cardiovascular disease or they have multiple cardiovascular risk factors, they need a higher dose of statin. So this is how the primary prevention algorithm was suggested and the secondary, if you look at the secondary prevention algorithm, they have again looked at uh, identifying the, the five-year or ten-year risk of uh, atherosclerosis uh, ASCVD events and uh, suggested the targets of HDI, I mean LDL, based on that. And uh, they've also spoken about additional therapies like azitimibe, which was also considered in that situation. So this was when the PCSK9 inhibitors were not available. Now, if you look at the recent uh, update from the ESC, uh, that is the European Society of Cardiology in 2009, they have brought down the target uh, LDL levels in those with high risk to less than 70 and those with very high risk that is those who have a previous cardiovascular event and diabetes to less than 55. And this has also been, uh, if you look at the ADA position statement however, we see that uh, they also speak about uh, similar to what the ACCEHA has been speaking, they have, they have been uh, following the similar sort of targets. But if you look at the Lipid Association of India, they have categorize people based on the risk factors and uh, diabetes puts, I mean presence of diabetes with even no other cardiovascular risk factor or one uh, or even a one, even a single other cardiovascular risk factor puts them at high risk. And uh, these are the individuals who are at high risk and those who have a, a who have more than two other cardiovascular risk factors, they, become, they come into the very high risk category and, and those with previous events come in the extremely high risk category. And the targets that they have suggested uh, is that uh, with diabetes without ASCVD, when there is no target organ damage and less than one other cardiovascular risk factor, that is no other cardiovascular risk factor, this they still suggest a target of LDL of less than 70 with two more cardiovascular risk factors, additional two cardiovascular risk factors other than diabetes, they put them in a very high risk category and suggested a target of less than 50. And those with pre-existing cardio, pre atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, they, they are in the high risk and the extremely high risk and extremely high risk type A and type B where the targets are less than 50 and type A and type B is less than 30. So that's how the LAI has stratified the risk, uh, cardiovascular risk among patients in, in with uh, diabetes. Now let us look at some of the studies which have looked at the role of statins, the outcomes with various statins. So if you look at the HPS trial, which was basically, uh, which enrolled about 5,000 uh, or 6,000 odd patients with diabetes. They had another 14,000 patients without diabetes and uh, they were randomized to either Simva statin versus placebo, a 40 milligram Simva statin versus placebo. And as you can see on the right side of the figure, you can see that the outcomes uh, in terms of uh, strokes and, uh, and uh, other cardiovascular events were significantly reduced by mm -hmm. close to 25% uh, reduction in incidence of first non-fatal or fatal stroke. Amongst the diabetes, diabetic participants, there was, no, there was a significant 24% uh, reduction in such strokes. So overall 20, 25%, even in diabetics it was 24%. And as you can see, uh, when, you start, when they stratified the patients based on other cardiovascular risk factors, previous MI, other CHD and other uh, uh, presence of uh, cardiovascular disease in the form of peripheral vascular disease or uh, cerebral vascular disease, uh, across the board all patients benefited from the use of statins and benefited similar to what was seen with non-diabetics. So clearly there was a 25% uh, uh, improvement uh, of uh, uh, reduction in cardiovascular events with the use of statin in patients with diabetes. The escort LA trial looked at the use of uh, randomized 19,000 patients who were on antihypertensive treatment and out of these uh, 19,000 patients uh, they enrolled uh, 10,000 into the lipid lowering arm and uh, they were either receiving atorvastatin 10 mg per day or placebo. So 5,000 on atorvastatin, another 5,000 on, on uh, placebo. And again we see that there was a 24% reduction in uh, the 
the risk of fatal and non-fatal strokes were reduced by 33% amongst those with diabetes and by 24% in those without diabetes after torvastatin treatment. So patients with diabetes tended to get a better result in this, in this, uh, in this trial with the use of atorvastatin 10 mg per day. And atorvastatin was clearly shown to have this benefit. Now, another important trial of that uh, time, I mean, about a decade, more than a decade old trial is the CARDS trial, which actually changed our thinking about uh, the use of statins because till that time the target LDL was kept at 130. And uh, in this trial, they have enrolled patients with uh, uh, LDL cholesterol levels between 100 to 130 and, and found who were otherwise not indicated to have a statin. And in that group also they found that there was a significant benefit with the use of statin, with the use of 10 mg of etorvastatin. So 1,400 patients randomized to etorvastatin versus placebo. The standard of care at that time was not to treat them uh, between 100 to 130, but with the treatment, there was a 37% reduction in incidence of ca major cardiovascular events, 48% reduction in the risk of stroke, and 32% reduction in acute cardiovascular endpoints. So this is probably one of the trials which changed our thinking about uh, the use of statins in in people with diabetes. So clearly there is a benefit in terms of the primary endpoints, the stroke, the secondary endpoints like death from any cause and any acute cardiovascular disease event. Then we have the JUPITER trial which is again a primary prevention trial with rosuvastatin using 20 mg of rosuvastatin as against placebo. There was a 44% reduction in the risk of uh, of the primary composite primary endpoint which is cardiovascular disease. So. Uh, here, what we clearly see, this was a trial which did not include patients with diabetes. So this was in patients without diabetes and you found that there was a 44% reduction in the incidence of cardiovascular events. But the new onset diabetes, as the chairperson was mentioning just now, there was increased by 28% and that actually brought, in the, uh, brought into focus the occurrence of new onset diabetes with the use of statins. And there was a lot of debate on that and, and uh, we have, after looking at all the data, the conclusion that has been made is that uh, the benefit that is provided by the use of statins probably far outweighs the risk that is there of new onset diabetes. In the HOPE 3 trial, you see that uh, there was, uh, there, um, patients were random, it was a 2 by 2 factorial design with candisartan or rosuvastatin 10 mg, candisartan with hydrochlorothiazide. And uh, here again, there was a 24% reduction with uh, 10 milligrams of rosuvastatin, there was a 24% reduction in the first co-primary outcome. And the second co-primary outcome of CV death, MI, stroke, cardiac arrest, revascularization and heart failure also came down by 25% clearly showing the benefits of rosuvastatin in this group. Treatment with rosuvastatin 10 mg per day resulted in significantly lower risk of cardiovascular events than placebo in intermediate risk eth ethnically diverse population without cardiovascular disease. So now looking at another statin which is uh, coming to the market recently that is the Pitavart statin. So this is although not been extensively studied but a few studies which are there have shown that there is uh, probably less of glycemic disturbance with the use of this statin as compared to atorvastatin or even pravastatin. So amongst the older statins, pravastatin had the lowest risk of uh, new onset diabetes and uh, when you look at uh, pitavastatin, the, that risk was uh, found to be uh, almost not increased with, with the use of pitavastatin. So it did not increase fasting blood glucose or HbA1c in people with diabetes unlike atorvastatin. And the live study, which was a two-year follow-up of pitavastatin therapy in type 2 diabetes with uh, about 300 patients, showed that there was a, a, a stable HbA1c of, you know, remaining at the same level or even coming down to a small extent. So there was a long-term therapy also up to two years. There was no increase in the HbA1c. And uh, so therefore, it may be a good option in patients with type 2 diabetes. There's another study called the J-PREDICT study, which, was, which had 1,200 patients who were on, who had IgT and who were treated with pitavastatin as compared to, uh, so this was the only uh, large-scale prospective study to evaluate the effect of statin therapy on new onset diabetes in, in patients with impaired glucose tolerance. And amongst this, uh, the primary uh, endpoint was the percentage of patients developing new onset diabetes. And what we saw in this study was that there was, after almost 60 months of use of uh, pitavastatin, there was a lower incidence of new onset diabetes in the group that was treated with pitavastatin as compared to the control group. 
So it significantly reduces the new onset diabetes by 18% in IGT patients. So if you look at uh, a meta-analysis, now having looked at these individual studies, if you look at a meta-analysis of all studies, what we see is that a 40, 40 milligram reduction in LDL uh, is brings down the major cardiovascular events by 22%, coronary revascularization by 25%, 21% reduction in strokes and major vascular events by 21%. And this is data from, a pool data from 18,000 odd patients with diabetes versus 71,000 patients without diabetes and 14 randomized trials of statins. So statin th therapy can clearly reduce cardiovascular events in patients with diabetes without, even those without CVD. Now, if you look at the comparative effect of statins, of the various statins on lipid parameters, you can see here that Rosuva statin is probably the one which has the maximum effect on, in terms of LDL lowering, has a very good effect on APO A1, APO B, uh, but also, I mean, and uh, if you look at the triglyceride lowering, probably it was best with lower statin, then followed by Rosuva statin, Atura statin at lower than that. And uh, if you look at, uh, so these are, this is a comparative, statement of the efficacy of various statins uh, through a met network meta-analysis of various studies. So just a word about the new onset diabetes with statins. We clearly know that uh, the uh, that this is a, uh, I mean, this is something which happens for, for sure. The predictors of no new onset diabetes may be, uh, may be uh, the, the, I mean, what we have seen is that the type of statin used has has a, a effect on the on the development of new onset diabetes. As we said, the Rosuva statin probably has the highest effect, followed by Tora statin, Prava statin, and then Pitava statin having the lowest effect. And high dose Atora statin therapy led to new onset diabetes in some patients in this in this trial, which was trying to identify predictors of new onset diabetes. Higher dose of statin, the higher is the uh, risk of new onset diabetes. This is clearly seen from a meta-analysis of all the statin studies. And 12% uh, higher diabetes risk with intensive dose versus moderate dose. So in spite of this, statins continue to be, to be the first line agents for diabetic dyslipidemia because of the fact that uh, they are providing a significant benefit in terms of reducing the cardiovascular events by almost 30%. So I think with that I'll conclude. I thank you all for the patient hearing.